we acknowledge the First Nations of the country we now call Australia, together with their custodianship of the land. We pay respect to their elders past and present. We also acknowledge our gracious hosts, the Pittwater Wesleyan Methodist Church. Thank you, Christina. Uh, greetings, Warumi. Mm, that's it. Okay, so we are uh, celebrating together, thank God. Uh, it's the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, and uh, as usual, when we gather, um, due to the uh, graciousness of our uh, uh, Wesleyan uh, uh, friends, uh, we gather in the eve, so it's Saturday uh, night, celebrating the liturgy for tomorrow. On this note, let's uh, begin with prayer. Glory to you, our God, glory to you. Heavenly King, comforted the spirit of truth, present everywhere and thin in all things, the treasure of goodness and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us from every impurity and save our souls, good one. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of above and salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, the stability of the holy churches of God, and the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this assembly and those who participate in it with faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Bishop Mikhail, the honorable priesthood of the Diaconate in Christ, and all the clergy and laity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this land, its civil authorities, and all its people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city and every city and country and the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonal weather, the abundance of the fruits of the earth and peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are traveling by land, sea or air, the sick, the suffering, for captives, and the safety of them all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, anger, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Remembering our all holy, pure, most blessed, glorious Lady, birth giver of God and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us entrust ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. Lord our God, whose might is beyond compare and whose glory is beyond understanding, whose mercy is beyond measure and whose love for us is beyond telling, in your loving kindness, Master, look upon us and upon this holy assembly and grant to us and those who pray with us the riches of your mercy and compassion. For to you belong all glory, honor and worship, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steady love. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according <coughs> to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his faithful love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our failures from us. As parents have compassion for their children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless 
Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Remembering our all holy, pure, most blessed, glorious Lady, birth giver of God, and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us entrust ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. Lord. Lord your God, save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church, sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power and do not forsake us who hope in you. For yours is the dominion and in yours are the kingdom and the power and the glory. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord in my life. I will sing to my God while I have my being. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in their God, the Lord, who has made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in it, who keeps truth forever, who executes judgment for the wrong, and who gives food to the hungry. The Lord frees the fettered. The Lord gives wisdom to the blind. The Lord restores the broken down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over strangers. He will take up the orphan and widow. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Sion, to generation after generation. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Only begotten Son and Word of God, you who are immortal, you consented for our salvation to be incarnate of the Holy Birth-Giver of God and ever Virgin Mary, without change becoming human, and you were crucified Christ our God by death trampling on death. You who are one of the Holy Trinity, glorify together with the Father and the Holy Spirit, save us. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Remembering our all holy, pure, most blessed, glorious Lady, birth giver of God and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us entrust ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, God, Lord. You who have given us these prayers to offer together and in harmony, and have promised to grant the request of even two or three who join together in your name. Fulfill now the petitions of your servants for their benefit, grant in us the knowledge of your truth in the present age, and in the age to come, eternal life. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we offer glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. In your kingdom, remember us, Lord, when you come in your kingdom. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. 
Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for this is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Marks the Lord our God, we have established in heaven orders and armies of angels and archangels for the service of your glory. Let there be without entrance an entry of holy angels, serving with us and joining us in glorifying your goodness. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Blessed is the entrance of your saints always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Wisdom at hand. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ. Save us, Son of God, who rose from the dead. We sing to you. When the women disciples of the Lord learned from the angel the joyful message of the resurrection and rejected the ancestors' decision, they cried aloud to the apostles, saying, Death has been despoiled, Christ God has risen, granting his great mercy to the world. The pastoral fruit of your theology conquered the trumpets of orators, for it searched the depths of the spirit, and you were enriched with the beauty of words. Intercede to Christ our God, our Father Gregory, that our souls may be saved. A protection of Christians that never fails an unchanged petitioner with the Creator. We sinners beg you to not ignore the voices of our prayers. O oh, good lady, we implore you, help us quickly when we cry out to you with faith. Hurry to intercession and hasten to supplication. O birth giver of God, ever protecting those who honor you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Holy God, resting among the holy, who is the thrice holy hymn, now praised by the seraphim, glorified by the cherubim, and worshipped by every heavenly power, who brought all things from non being into being who created humanity in your image and likeness, and adorn them with your every gift, who give wisdom and understand those who ask and do not overlook the sinner, but have established a change of mind for salvation, who have made us your lowly and unworthy servants, worthy to stand at this hour before the glory of your holy altar, and offer the worship and praise due to you. Accept, Master, the thrice holy hymn, even from the mouth of us sinners, and visit us in your goodness. Forgive us every wrongdoing, both voluntary and involuntary. Sanctify our souls and bodies, and grant that we may worship you in holiness all the days of our life. Through the prayers of the holy birth giver of God, and of all the saints who in every age have been pleasing to you. For you, our God, are holy, and to you we offer glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy. Holy God.
Holy Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Holy, immortal, have mercy on us. God is power. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Let us attend. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. Wisdom. The reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Sisters and brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for my people is that they may be saved. I can testify that they have a zeal for God, but it is not enlightened. For, being ignorant of the righteousness that comes from God and seeking to establish their own, they have not submitted to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down? Or, Who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead? But what does, he, what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart, that is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. Peace be with you, the reader. divine knowledge shine within our hearts, loving Master, and open the eyes of our mind to understand the message of your gospel. Instill in us also the fear of your blessed commandments, so that having trampled down all desires of the flesh, we may pursue a spiritual way of life, thinking and doing all those things that are pleasing to you. For you are the illumination of our souls and bodies, Christ our God, and to you we are for glory with your eternal Father and your all holy, good and life-giving Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Wisdom, attend. Let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. Let us be attentive. At that time when he came to the other side of the sea, of course, the country of the gatherings, two demoniacs coming out of the tombs met him. They were so fierce that no one could pass that way. Suddenly they shouted, What have you to do with us, Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now a large herd of swine was feeding at some distance from them. The demons begged him, If you cast us out, send us into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go. So they came out and entered the swine, and suddenly the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and perished in the water. The swine herds ran off, and on going into the town, they told the whole story about what had happened to the demoniacs. Then the whole town came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their neighborhood. And after getting into a boat, he crossed the water and came to his own town. Glory to you, o Lord. Glory to you. Okay. 
Let's see. It. <clears throat> so, the fifth Sunday of the Pentecost, and uh, perhaps um, those of you who um, participated last Sunday, uh, you remember my attempt at drawing a connecting line uh, between these Sundays, or oh, first Sundays after Pentecost, and I believe that this one is connected to, although <laughs> the story is so different. Mm -hmm. It's a very different story, at least in the, in the Gospel passage. There, there's more consistency, I think, between these uh, Romans reading and uh, the previous uh, readings from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, but uh, even this one is a bit strange. Actually, these two passages for today are quite strange. Now, just uh, to put ourselves back in that kind of picture or a connection, what would be the main thread that connects these Sundays? Can you remember? Personal, personal choice. Choice. <coughs> Great, Peter. Thanks. So it's the idea of us, God's people, uh, having to redefine, re reinvent ourselves. Yeah. As we kept talking, you know, about last year, uh, about this last year, uh, we are actually uh, supposed to undertake every year the catechism in this liturgical setting. Uh, and uh, while we climb up the stairs, so to speak, of, uh, uh, of gospel wisdom uh, uh, that culminates with the uh, Paschal season and Pentecost, uh, then we sort of uh, are invited to get back to basics and take it from the scratch. By the way, uh, does anyone make sense of this? Why, why do we do this? Is it because we, or oh, our... Uh, predecessors in the faith had little imagination and uh, could only think of a, a, an annual cycle of readings or what? What's, what's option B? <laughs> <laughs> option B! <laughs> well, you know, it, it, other Christians have developed, but I think more recently, not, not, uh, not in antiquity or, or the Middle Ages. Recently they, they have developed uh, two or three year cycles mm -hmm. uh, of readings. Right. Right which means they, they go through more scriptures than we do, that's clear. Yeah? Um, at least in the liturgical setting, uh, as in the setting of the liturgy. Yeah? Otherwise, we have lots of readings which, by the way, we at St. Gregory's don't go through because uh, we don't do those services, but uh, Vespers, which is, for example, the, the place uh, the, place for a Sunday uh, Vespers is this Saturday night, but we do the liturgy because we don't have our own space. Mm -hmm. uh, but Vespers usually has uh, readings from the Old Testament, not only different Psalms from what we read in the liturgy, but there are other readings, prophets, mm -hmm. chronicles, you name it. Yeah? Um, but we also have, of course, uh, that uh, heavy bombardment, scriptural bombardment in Holy Week. Lots and lots and lots of readings, and, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, so we are back in some kind of picture. There's this ongoing catechism that takes place within the liturgical setting where we are supposed to read the scriptures together. This is very important. I mean, uh, if, we, if you come to think of it, this is a very balanced a nuanced model of understanding catechism, a catechism that is, that is based on scriptural interpretation, first and foremost, but it, it, uh, it takes place within the assembly, the context of the holy assembly, the holy gathering, uh, and it's not just the interpretation of one, you know, I uh, uh, take the train and uh, uh, get a good book from my iPad or my pocket and uh, uh, keep reading on my own. Or the other model, where you have uh, uh, some uh, uh, imperial majesties, uh, infallible persons uh, uh, throwing thunderbolts of decrees and uh, dogmas uh, uh, down to us uh, poor sinners uh, because we are so stupid that we can't make sense of it. 
and we need to be taught from above. Or well, not that above, sort of higher up in the ranks. But our model is, as you remember, we talked about the, the fancy concept that I learned from St. Maximus the Confessor, synexetasis in Greek, which means careful consideration of a topic in togetherness. That syn, S-Y-N, means together. So this is what we do, and we relearn um, the basics uh, in this new cycle of readings um, together. That's the idea. Okay. And uh, as Peter reminded us, we have uh, uh, a new thread to think of. As God's people, it's a matter of deciding, do we really want to be what we are supposed to be? Are we really that? In order to be that, we need to take it from the scratch, I repeat, take it, uh, go back to basics and relearn the gospel and reinvent ourselves and hopefully, in God's grace and uh, with uh, wisdom from above, the real above, not the other one, um, we might progress perhaps a little bit this year past what we learned last year. That's the idea. Now, let's see just a bit, you know, to uh, re uh, re how to do? rewind, yeah, that's the word, uh, the tape. Uh, and um, uh, see if we can make sense of the first passage. So that passage in the Romans is really uh, a tough cookie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of words. <laughs> lots of words. Lots of words. So, so give me a few of those words. <laughs> uh, zeal and enlightenment. Zeal, yes. enlightenment. Yeah. yeah, some are enlightened, other, uh, yes, others others are not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what would be the the uh, the, uh, the main key word in this passage? Uh, well, I think, yeah, righteousness. that's righteousness, yeah, righteousness, so the righteousness of God, which, by the way, remember, this is the work of a Jewish Christian, St. Paul, yeah? so uh, what we take for the Christian New Testament <coughs> is actually Jewish Christian, only a few things refer to, say, other cultural um, horizons, beyond the uh, Jewish boundaries. Yeah? But this is a Jewish Christian message. And of course, uh, as we kept saying you know, a while ago, uh, you're in Australia, you speak English because this is the common language. You, 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 you don't talk in Romanian, you know? You, uh, if I start uh, doing the uh, Babel Tower here with mm -hmm. Romanian and other languages, you know, uh, there's no use to. And there's no purpose in doing so. We use the common language. So, uh, St. Paul, writing mainly to Jewish Christians, yeah, had to find with them the common denominator, common tongue. And he made references to the culture of his own people. And righteousness is a key concept. Righteousness, holiness are key concepts in the Old Testament. Yeah. So when we look at the New Testament, we need to understand that we already receive a contextualized message. It's not naked gospel, so to speak. It's a gospel clothed in a cultural, whatever, attire. Yeah? A certain kind of linguistic cultural vestment. It's very important, because otherwise we... Uh, we take it literally, mm. and we go back to Jewish Christianity, as, sorry to say, some Christians did, to the extent that they, uh, they overshadow the New Testament, they read it in the light of the Old Testament, like the ancient Jewish Christians. Whereas the apostolic norm mm. is to read the Old Testament in the light of the New Testament, which is quite tricky because the New Testament is Jewish Christian. Mm. So, we need to dig deeper and to uh, apply discernment, prayer, mm. under the grace of God. Mm. And I guess that's what this passage is saying too, uh, that the righteousness yeah. is coming from the New Testament, i.e. Christ, not yeah. the Old Testament, Faith. the law. Yeah. Mm. Mm. There you have it. Yeah. So now, now in this light, we, we can interpret the passage somehow. Oh, oh, as I said, this is really a tough cookie. Uh, but 
the idea is at least we can identify this contrast between uh, what righteousness is for the Jewish people and what righteousness is for uh, God's new people. Yeah? <coughs> and what would be that main difference? Can, um, can we see this in the passage? Is the passage relevant in, one, in some way to uh, this discussion? So the righteousness that, uh, righteousness that comes from the law and the righteousness that comes from faith. The, the, the contrast is clear. But what's the difference between these two forms of righteousness or these two understandings of righteousness or holiness? Law is one that's observed by reading. That's reading, yeah. Well, reading read. certain laws. Yes, yeah. laws, prescriptions, yeah. commandments, and all that. Whereas mm -hmm. the righteousness by faith is one that's confessed with your lips and believed in your heart. Yep, yeah. and it's a matter of trust in God. Trust in God. Yeah. Thank you, Asim. So it, it's it sounds though Saint Paul take a step back from the culture and the habits of his people saying okay so we all know of the concept of righteousness we all are children of the Old Testament yeah? and uh, uh, as such we, we don't we don't throw a, what, what's that word the, the baby with the, with the bath water with the bath okay so uh, we keep something in we uh, uh, push something out the water but not the baby yeah, <laughs> not the baby. Keep the baby. Keep righteousness. And therefore, uh, uh, we should focus on the topic of righteousness, but perhaps we should uh, interpret it, understand it differently. And the, uh, what, what does he find so counterproductive in the righteousness according to the, the Old Testament, uh, the law? What is... Why is he uh, sort of taking a step back from that? He, he says here, I can testify that the Jews have a zeal for God, but is not enlightened mm -hmm. um, for being ignorant of the righteousness that comes from God. So there's unenlightenment and ignorant. Um, okay, and in, in, in the light of that, in the light of that <laughs> uh, uh, unenlightenment. <laughs> Okay, so what do they do? How do they understand righteousness? Let's, let's again think of the preaching of the Lord. Who were his main adversaries? The Pharisees. The Pharisees. Yes. And what was the, what was the problem? Because if you remember at some point, uh, oh, Yeshua says to his disciples, if your righteousness will not exceed that of the Pharisees, you're doomed, whatever. Don't remember yeah. now. But this means that the, uh, the Pharisees were righteous to an extent. But what was so problematic about their kind of getting righteous? It, was, it seemed to be that he could see in them a, a righteousness that was cold and hard. There was no yep. sense of compassion and love for other people. Okay, it so was it wasn't about, transformative. Yeah, it was always about following this prescription. Yeah, tick the boxes. Tick the box, and yeah. that, that's what counts as righteousness, but there was no love for people. Great. Mm. Mm. Okay, so they had this sense of righteousness slash virtue, if you like, mm. uh, that wasn't transformative. They, they did not understand the path of virtue as a path of change, mm. uh, life-changing, life-changing experience and they just tick boxes mm. and then they praise themselves mm. boasted because of their virtues that's one problem the other problem is and let's go back to St. Paul's contrast what does he say about the righteousness that comes from faith mm. the righteousness that comes from faith is characterized by what from within. From within. Mm -hmm. 
And at the center of his faith is what? Not thinking about who will go to heaven and who will go to hell. Mm, yeah, we'll get to that. that that's the, the hard cookie part. Mm. Uh -huh. Let's leave that for a moment. <laughs> yeah. But you, you are almost there. So what, what, how does St. Paul treat that whatever conundrum, that enigmatic statement there? It's right after that. So at the heart of his faith, yes? Um, confession. Confession is one of these. Of? Yeah. Mm. That Jesus is Lord. Yay! Well, <laughs> hallelujah, brother. <laughs> Thanks, kids. Okay, so, that, that, so there's a theological core to this entire experience, so to speak. That Jesus is Lord. You know what this sounds like to a Hebrew uh, mind. Blasphemy. Right? Blasphemy. Why is blasphemy? Why? Because Lord is God. God! <laughs> hey, there you have it. So, Yeshua isn't, uh, I don't know, your neighbor, you go have a beer, but you got cut grass together, you know, whatever, yeah. mow the lawn and uh, play soccer, or um, I don't know what other things you do with yeah. your neighbor. <laughs> yes? <laughs> he is Lord. He is God. So at the center of this faith is this, let's call it theological conviction that Yeshua, Jesus, is God. This, this changes the, the whole equation. You know why? Because faith means in the New Testament, especially in St. Paul, trust, surrender to. So when, when he says the righteousness that comes from faith is focused on confessing uh, Jesus as Lord, resurrected Lord, yeah, he actually says, well, you have to trust him. You no longer trust yourself. And now in this light, you understand what St. Paul, in the footsteps of uh, our Lord Je uh, Jesus, uh, reproached to the Pharisees. They had a sense of righteousness that came from their own efforts, will, determination to tick the boxes. Me, myself, and I. And this is why they boasted because they were virtuous, because they attributed those virtues to their own efforts. While St. Paul says, well, fine, that's the righteousness that comes from the law of commandments. If there's a commandment and you do the commandment, well, there you have it. Now, now you're a righteous person and you can boast. But that's foolishness. Because true righteousness comes from the Lord. It's a gift of connection, synergy, participation in the grace of the Lord. It's not only you. It is you. You are involved there because uh, that's your decision to uh, walk on the path of virtue. It's not someone else's. It's your decision to, to change life. Is that what you mean by synergy? Something? Yes. Mm -hmm. Two. Yeah, cooperation. Yeah, it's cooperation. But you don't do it on your own. You are always supported uh, by God's grace mm -hmm. in everything you do. And the more you surrender to God's grace, the more you walk the path of righteousness in a God-pleasing way uh, and have uh, no reason to uh, boast for whatever virtues you think you have or have acquired. Okay, so let's call, it, let's call this the easy part. Now comes that nutcracker, whatever... Uh, don't say this so that you don't, uh, uh, don't say in your heart who will ascend into heaven that is to bring Christ down or who will descend into the abyss that is to bring Christ up from the dead I have no idea what he means here uh, other than um, perhaps he makes reference to some kind of dispute that existed among people and I could add one more thing since he says well if you believe that Jesus is Lord then that's the key to the problem. In other words, there were people who could not pinpoint Jesus' 
true identity. They got stuck in uh, the appearance of his humility. He was born, he grew up, uh, he was a carpenter, uh, he famished, uh, thirsted, uh, ate and drank and then managed to die. And for many people this has become and has remained a stumbling block through the centuries. To this day there are people who cannot believe that Yeshua is Lord God resurrected. My pal, my, uh, I heard a few things, my lover, that it's uh, the, the new buzz. Oh, that's mystical Christianity. Hmm, okay. Um, but I don't know, what, how, do, do you have any idea how to interpret those things? Don't say this because you'll say that. Don't say the other thing because it'll mean the other thing. <laughs> I don't know. It's like that Al, Al Pacino conversation. Well, no, no, it's not Al Pacino. Be the crystal yeah, instead the of Al Pacino. Yeah. No, no, instead of De Niro with the, the mobsters. Than that. <laughs> What's the thing? What thing? That thing? <laughs> what, what? The other thing? No, 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 it's the other thing. Okay, so something like this. I, I don't get it. I don't know what, what he means. Do you have any idea? When, when he says to bring Christ up from the dead, does that imply that Christ is with the dead? Yeah, I don't know. I, so so it's very really that he's with the dead for the three days after his crucifixion. Yeah. yeah, but don't say that in your heart so that you whatever. Yeah. I, I don't get it. No. Really? Okay, so let's leave it there. <coughs> uh, but Mia, are, are you happy with uh, this uh, yeah, enigmatic statement? <laughs> Stay as is, enigmatic. <laughs> I think it's don't try to do many interpretations. Ah, stay away from speculation. Mm. Don't try to give so many sides on the same thing because so otherwise you'll be up. lost I in your... Shut up, close no, up. no, no, but not to give more, you okay. know. Don't, don't go, don't cross the boundaries. Yeah. Okay, so let's leave it there. It's uh, very enigmatic. Anyway, I, I, I don't get it, really. Yeah. I tried. I tried. <laughs> don't get it. Keep it simple. Yeah, okay, let's keep it simple and uh, uh, believe that Jesus is Lord, confess that he is Lord and uh, Stand up for Jesus, who is Lord. Okay, so next one from Matthew. Mm. Fact of life. Yeah? Fact of life. The invisible haunts us. The invisible isn't so invisible sometimes. It, it, it becomes very visible, very tangible, and dramatically so, at least in this story, you know. And uh, in this case we have, uh, you know, a case of slavery. You know, again, slavery, we talked about slavery last time, and there are so many meanings of slavery in the scriptures. But this is uh, the worst of them, uh, where uh, two people are no longer able to make a decision. Uh, you, you, you can't make any decision because you are, you are entirely under the, the, uh, the power, the authority of someone else and it, 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 it wasn't your doing it, you, didn't, you didn't want that kind of slavery you did not willingly submit at least that's the idea but even if you did now there's no way for you to, uh, to, to become free to, to get, get free of it. Yeah? Okay, so, um, is there a choice in this thing? Um, perhaps not so much. We don't know the story of the, of the two people. In other Gospels, it's just one. We don't know the story, we don't know how uh, these people became possessed. We just know that they were, and there was no way for them to make any decision whatsoever. So, free choice is bye-bye for them. But other people have 
the capacity to choose, and they don't choose the right way. Who are those? The swine herds. Yeah. yeah, the swine herds and the whole town. The whole town, yeah, the employers. Yeah. Um, so that entire, entire town chose to send the Lord away. What must have prompted their decision? Because it's a decision, it's a choice. Mm -hmm. Profit. Profit. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they, 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 they were scared not to have uh, uh, more of their income, whatever uh, uh, means, you know, ruined by, uh, by this guy who uh, supposedly freed uh, uh, a couple of uh, uh, marginalized persons and uh, ruined the entire economy of the, of the place. Yeah, so that's the rationale, the cold rationale of uh, people. Very modern. Very modern. In a way, if we assume that they had not met Jesus or heard of Jesus before, it's um, understandable in a way, because they're not aware of the light that Sheshua brings to us all, and they're just living a normal life. Or whatever normality is for them. Yeah. 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 In in the horizon of materiality, so to speak. Yeah. By the way, it's a choice. It's a it's a decision. It, uh, these people, the, uh, the the inhabitants of that town, uh, were not possessed. All of them, or at least not. Uh, uh, mm. Yeah. Not on the surface, but yeah. they had their own dependence and attachment. But you're wondering why they didn't. Um, at least be curious about the demoni demoniacs should be coming free. Yeah. It, they this were not only that's not curious, they were mm -hmm. lacking compassion. Right. Yes. So materialism blinds us to an extent these were slaves too. But they were slaves to something that they loved dearly and it was income. Very modern, very Australian. Yeah. Gospel of Australia. Western world, actually, whole world. Whatever. Yeah. Well, it's not so much. I mean, there are, there are places and groups of people who actually choose a different kind of life when they could actually live this way. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are cases, you know, don't, we don't have to go back now to you know, National Geographic and stuff. But there are places where they resist the gifts of civilization because they know better. Anyway, so is this Sunday um, a good follow up from the previous ones? You've got to say yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Choices, 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 and and uh, we have so many examples of good choices, bad choices, uh, which means what we are invited not only to think in terms of I'm entitled to, to choose. We God's people are supposed to think a bit differently. I'm entitled to, or rather called to choose well, which entails good stuff. A kind of spiritual discernment uh, that guides us in life uh, and without which everything collapses and we become slaves either to swine or to I don't know other things and at some point we might even cop it got a bit the way the two individuals did. Mm -hmm. And is it more than wisdom? Is it, is it um, um, gratitude or appreciation? Like well, it's, com yeah, it's complex. I mean, the, the, if we feel grateful and we express gratitude, this means we are wise because we know how things really are, that life is a gift and whatever we are and, yeah. and can, have is a gift. And can we say it also includes obedience, which is like moving into the action to actually do things. So it's not just we think about it, we actually do something about it. So it's an obedient response, it's a behaviour. It is, to an extent it is, because, you know, without the guidance of, of the gospel, the wisdom of the gospel, 
there's no way for us to acquire wisdom. Mm -hmm. And therefore, yeah, all these things go hand in hand. There's no walking the path of virtue or wisdom without uh, discernment. There's no discernment and wisdom without uh, obeying the gospel and so on and so forth. All mm. these go hand in hand and we have to adopt a very holistic approach to the path. This is a good lesson because, for example, and I'll close it here because well, we can keep going like this forever. Uh, but one thing that we should be aware of uh, is has to do with uh, the situation of orthodoxy, internationally speaking, uh, in our day and age. There are people who uh, identify orthodoxy with doctrine and commitment to the doctrine, and they don't give a damn on anything else. Others um, um, believe it's all about uh, the liturgy, and observe all the rubrics of the liturgy, turn right, turn left, toll the bells, light the candle, extinguish the candle, extinguish the spirit, everything. Um, and others who are very moralistic, judgmentally so. Mm. So there are like three bunch of people, bunches of people, like the zeal of the unenlightened, I would call it. And they don't realize that they are attached to certain aspects of a fuller truth and in reality we have to keep a balance between all these and more may we be guided there mm. to that kind of wisdom mm. Mm. let us all say with all our soul and with all our mind let us say Lord mm. have okay. mercy yes. Lord Almighty the God of our mothers and fathers mm. we ask you hear us and have mercy Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy. We ask you, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for Bishop Mikhail. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, visitation, pardon and forgiveness of sins for the servants of God, all devout and orthodox Christians who live in or visit this city and all those who worship with this holy assembly. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for all our devout and orthodox brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest before us and lie asleep in all the world. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, our God, accept this fervent supplication from your servants, and have mercy on us according to the abundance of your mercy, and send down your compassion on us and all your people who await your rich mercy. For you are a merciful and loving God, and to you we offer glory. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Wisdom. Again and often we fall down before you, good and loving one, and ask you to regard our prayer, cleanse our souls and bodies from every defilement of flesh and spirit, and grant that we may stand at your holy altar without guilt or condemnation. Grant also those who pray with us, O God, progress in life and faith and spiritual understanding. Grant that they may always worship you with fear and love, and take part in your holy mysteries without guilt or condemnation, and be made worthy of your heavenly kingdom. That always protected by your power, we may offer you glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us who mystically represent the cherubim, and who sing the thrice holy hymns to the love of the Trinity. 
Now lay aside all earthly care, that we may receive the King of all, visibly attended by the angelic orders. Hallelujah. Let us who mystically represent the cherubim, and who sing the thrice holy hymn to the life-giving Trinity. Now lay aside all earthly care that we may receive the King of all invisibly attended by the angelic orders. Alleluia. Please forgive me and bless you. May God forgive you and bless you all. May the Lord God remember all of you in his kingdom, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the precious gifts presented, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this holy assembly and those who participate in it with faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all deliverers from all affliction, da uh, anger, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us. And protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. That this whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful God, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For pardon and forgiveness of our sins and offenses, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For that which is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us ask of the Lord. Grant and this, O Lord. Lord. That we may complete the remainder of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. Grant and this, O Lord. Lord. That the end of our life may be Christian, painless, unashamed, and peaceful. And for a good defense of the fearful judgment seat of Christ, let us ask of the Lord. Grant and this, O Lord. Lord. Remembering our all holy, pure, most blessed, glorious Lady, birth giver of God and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us entrust ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, Lord. Lord God Almighty, call on our holy and accept the sacrifice of praise from those who call upon you with all their heart. Receive also the prayer of our sinners and bring you to your holy altar and enable us to for your gifts and spiritual sacrifices on behalf of our sins and the failings of the people. And make us worthy to find favor before you so that our sacrifice may be acceptable to you and the good spirit of your grace may dwell on us and on these gifts presented in all your people. Through the compassion of your only begotten Son with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, good and life-giving Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Peace be with you all. Amen.
and with your spirit. Let us love one another that with one mind we may confess. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Trinity of one essence and in second. Christ no means. Christ no means. Christ no means. Christ now meets. The doors, the doors in wisdom, let us attend. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light from light, from God on from God, begotten of May, of one essence with the Father, through him all things remain, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became human, and was crucified for us on the point of fire, and suffered and was buried, and rose on the third day according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord will give of life, to proceed from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, and who spoke through the prophets. In one holy, catholic, and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I expect the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Amen. Let us stand well. Let us stand with fear. Let us attend that we may make the holy offering in peace. A mercy of peace and sacrifice of praise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them, them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is proper and right. It is proper and right to sing to you, to bless you, to praise you, to give thanks to you, and to worship you in every place of your dominion. For you are God beyond word, beyond thought, invisible, beyond reach, ever existing, ever the same. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You brought us from non-being into being, and when we fell, you raised us up again and left nothing undone until you brought us up to heaven and bestowed on us your kingdom to come. For all these things we give thanks to you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, and for all the benefits known and unknown, seen and unseen, that have been granted to us. We give thanks to you also for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands, the thousands of archangels and myriads of angels attend you, the cherubim and the seraphim, sixth winged, many eyes soaring aloft on their wings, singing the victory hymn, exclaiming, crying out, and saying, Holy, 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 Lord Samuel, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. With this blessed power's loving master, we also cry out and say, Holy are you and all holy, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. Holy are you and all holy, and exalted is your glory. You so loved your world, that you gave your only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but have eternal life. He came and fulfilled all the divine plan for us, and on the night he was given up, or rather gave himself up for the life of the world, he took bread in his holy, pure and blameless hands, gave thanks and blessed, sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, saying, Drink from it, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, 
which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Remembering then this commandment of the Savior and all that has been done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, the third day, the ascent into heaven, the sitting at the right hand, the second and glorious coming again, your own from your own, we offer you in every way and for everything. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, our Lord, and we entreat you, our Lord. Again, we offer you this spiritual and bloodless act of worship, and we ask you and entreat you and implore you, send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts presented. And may this bread, the precious body of your Christ. Amen. Amen. And what is in this cup, the precious blood of your Christ. Amen. Amen. Changing them through your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So that to those who partake of them, they may be for vigilance of soul, for the forgiveness of sins, for communion with your Holy Spirit, for the fullness of the kingdom of heaven, for boldness before you, not for judgment or condemnation. Again, we offer you this spiritual act of worship for those who have gone to their rest in faith, ancestors, forebears, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and every righteous spirit perfected in faith especially for our all holy, pure, most blessed, glorious Lady, birth giver of God, and ever Virgin Mary. Truly, it is right to call you blessed, birth giver of God, ever blessed, and all pure, and the mother of our God, more honourable than the cherubim, incomparably more glorious than the seraphim, who undefiled gave birth to God the Word, true birth giver of God, we magnify you. We also offer this spiritual act of worship for St. John the Prophet, for Rana and Baptist, for the holy, glorious and praiseworthy Apostles, for the holy, righteous and divine forebears Joachim and Anna, and for all your saints through whose supplications visit us, O God. And remember all those who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection to eternal life, and give them rest where the light of your countenance keeps watch. Again we ask you, Lord, remember all Orthodox bishops who rightly teach the word of your truth, all the priesthood, the diaconate in Christ, every priestly and monastic order, and all your people. Again, we offer this spiritual act of worship for the whole world, your creation, for the holy, catholic, and apostolic church, for those who lead a pure and holy way of life, for our civil authorities and all those in public service. Grant that they may serve and govern in peace, Lord, so that in a time of tranquility, we too may lead a peaceful and quiet life in all piety and holiness. Among the first, remember, Lord, Bishop Mikhail, grant to your holy churches that he remain in peace, safety, honor, health, and length of days, rightly teaching the word of your truth. And all men and all women. Remember, Lord, this place where we live, and every place and country, and the faithful who live in them. Remember, Lord, those who are traveling by land, sea, or rare, the sick, the suffering, the captives, and the oppressed, and be the safety of them all. Remember, Lord, those who bear fruit and nurture the soil in your holy churches and who remember the poor. Send your mercies upon us all. And grant that with one mouth and one heart we may glorify and praise your all-honored and exalted name. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. And the mercies of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be with all of you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Having remembered all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the precious gifts presented and sanctified, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. That our loving God, who has received them on his holy, heavenly, spiritual altar, as a sweet-scented spiritual fragrance may send down to us in return divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Having asked for the unity of the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. 
to you we entrust our whole life and hope, loving Master. And we ask you and entreat you and implore you, make us worthy to partake of your heavenly and awesome mysteries at this holy and spiritual table with a pure conscience for the forgiveness of sins, for pardon of offenses, for communion with the Holy Spirit, for inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, for boldness before you, not for judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, Master, that we may with boldness and without condemnation dare to call upon you, the heavenly God as Father, and say, Our, Our Father in the heavens, blessed be your name. May your, your kingdom come, come. May, may your will be done, be done on earth in heaven, so on earth. earth. Give us today the bread that nourishes us. us. Forgive us what we owe, as we forgive those who owe us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours are the kingdom and the power and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads to the Lord. To you, O Lord. We give thanks to you, invisible King, for your infinite power created all things, and the abundance of your mercy brought all things from non-being into being. Look from heaven, Master, upon those who have bowed their heads to you, for they have not bowed to flesh and blood, but to you, the awesome God. Therefore, Master, smooth the way that is set before us according to the need of each. Sail with those who sail, travel with those who are traveling, heal the sick physician of our souls and bodies. The grace and compassion, loving kindness of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, good and life-giving Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Hear us, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, from your holy dwelling, and from the throne of glory of your kingdom, and come to sanctify us, you who sit above with the Father and are here present with us unseen. And by your mighty hand, be pleased to share your pure body and precious blood with us and through us, with all the people. Let us attend the holy gift for the holy ones. One is holy, one is Lord Jesus Christ. To the glory of God the Father. The lamp of God is broken and distributed, broken, yet not divided, ever eaten, yet never expended, but sanctifying those who partake. The fullness of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Blessed is the heat of your holy things, always, now, and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. The heat of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The servant of God, Doru, a priest, received the body of Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Fear of God with faith and love, draw me near. The servant of God, William, receives the body and blood of Christ, the forgiveness of sins and eternal life.
servant of God, Jack, receive the body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Amen. The servant of God, Peter, receives the body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Amen. Servant of God, sin, receive the body and blood of Christ and the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Amen. The servant of God, Monica, receive the body and blood of Christ and the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. The servant of God, Peter, receive the body and blood of Christ and the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Amen. Servant of God, me, and Robin, to receive the body of Christ and the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Amen. The servant of God, love and pray, to receive the body of Christ and the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Amen. Servant of God, of Julia Arena, receive the body and blood of Christ and the forgiveness of sins. In eternal life. Amen. Save, O oh God, your people, and bless your inheritance. We have seen the true light, we have received the heavenly spirit. We have found the true faith, worshipping the undivided trinity which saved us. Be exalted above the heavens, O God. And your glory above all the earth. Blessed is our God always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us be filled with praise, Lord, that we may sing of your glory. You have made us worthy to partake of your holy mysteries. Keep us in your holiness as all the day we meditate on your righteousness. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And then, having partaken of the divine, holy, pure, immortal, heavenly, and life-giving, awesome mysteries of Christ, let us give proper thanks to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Attend. Having asked that this whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, our Lord. We give thanks to you, loving Master, benefactor of our souls, that also on this day you have made us worthy of your heavenly and immortal mysteries. Make straight our way, keep us all firm in the fear of you. Guard our life. Make safe our steps through the prayers and supplications of the glorious birth giver of God and ever Virgin Mary and with all your saints. For you are our sanctification and to you we offer glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name, in the name of, the of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. O oh Lord, who bless those who bless you and sanctify those who put their trust in you, save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church, sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by a divine power and do not forsake us with hope in you. 
Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to priests, to those in authority, and to all your people. For every good act of giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from you, the Father of lights. And to you we offer glory and thanks and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord, from now and forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord, from now and forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord, from now and forevermore. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. May the blessing and mercy of the Lord come upon you through His grace and loving kindness, always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Glory to your God, glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Father, bless. May he who rose from the dead, Christ, their true God, the praise of his own pure and blameless Holy Mother, of the holy, glorious, and praiseworthy apostles, of St. Uh, John, the golden mouth of Constantinople, of St. Gregory, the theologian of Constantinople, of the holy, righteous, and divine forebears, Joachim and Anna, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us as a good and loving God. Amen. Amen. Through the prayers of our holy mothers and fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. May the Holy Trinity protect all of you. Thank you for walking with me and all of the other boys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Thank God for everything. Thank you.